And now, welcome to the second ever Yugi Boom podcast. Ooh! OCG versus TCG. Ah! Ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode, I am joined with an awesome panel of hosts. We've got Francisco. Woo! And guest starring on this new episode is our editor at large, Toby. Toby. Hey guys. You I might know him sh- from the Shiranui uh, deck profile video, which has like 5,000 views right I, now. I did not expect that uh, video to get that many views, honestly. Yeah, he's coming out of the woodwork. Even, even I'm kind of shocked. We all slay slave of making deck profiles each week, and our editor comes in, makes a deck profile that performs everything this year so far. So, touche. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyways, on today's episode, we're going to be talking about the differences between the OCG and the TCG. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of differences. Lots of differences. A lot of differences. So uh, let's start off real quick by just reminding everybody what the actual difference is, what what at heart is an o- is the OCG and TCG. Yeah. So uh, OCG, I think we, stand, we finally found it stands for official card game, right? Yeah, I mean, very practical. I think at first we were, we said like what ocean card game? Like, <laughs> ocean. For, you know what? For some reason, that kind of made sense. It's overseas, yeah, so that like, would make sense. It's like the first thing that pops into my head is, oh, this is in Japan, so the, it's o- overseas for the card game or something. Over, I don't know, man. A lot of people oh. said original too, so original. original is an option. Original card game, yeah. But I think from according to the extensive fifteen minutes of research that we did, <laughs> uh, I think we have official card game. The official card game, exactly. Which, yeah, I guess ours is not official. <laughs> uh, so real quick, um, we had our editor do some awesome uh, deep diving work and figuring out what actually is the uh, locations that comprise the OCG and TCG. Uh, we've got Hong Kong. Taiwan, Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, South Korea, and Japan. Of as course. of course, right? As yeah. everything in the uh, OCG, the official card game. Obviously not the TCG because that's what we are. And everybody else is TCG. I'm actually very surprised Philippines is in that list because the thing is, is that the Philippines doesn't even have their own writing system in their language. Um, they kind of rely a lot on um, you know Romanized text or you know you know, just English writing and stuff like that. So I'm kind of wondering how they're not getting the TCG as opposed to like, you know, them getting the OCG. I'm really wondering how, how they have that. Yeah, no, I think a good point. And isn't like there's lots of like OCG, or I'm sorry, not OCG, but Philippines as a whole, isn't like, that's it's American continent or something like America? It's it's an American territory. territory a lot word, of yeah. its uh, cheap exports come from America. So That's right. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, you know, they also get a lot of their stuff from, like, you know, neighboring Southeast Asia, you know, stuff. But, you know, that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> okay. Their main consumers, like, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much American consumers. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but, yeah, so that, that kind of lays the playing field of today's podcast. Um, we're going to be going over the differences between what the OCG and TCG are, um, starting with uh, the probably the coolest topic of all and the one that we had the most fun researching, uh, censorship. Yeah. Oof, yeah. Uh, I, I, like, honestly, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to get into this, you know, this episode was because I actually, like, as a kid... Uh, one of the biggest things that sort of resonates in my mind, especially, you know, first getting into Yu-Gi-Oh! was having that original Metal Raiders Harpy Lady. Mm-hmm. You know, that the, the one with the woo, yeah. you know. Yeah, boosties. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. The big ones, yeah. And, like, <laughs> I honestly did not remember what happened to that card. And each time I told people about it, they would not believe me. They're like, yeah, man, she always had, like, the spandex or, like, you know... What was it? They they changed it twice, actually. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, but um, that kind of that that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to get into um, in regards to censorship is something I personally like to call the four gates of censorship. Ooh, okay. Someone came prepared. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what do you call those four gates of censorship? So, um, <laughs> whether you call them pillars or gates, you know, it kind of translates, you know, to whatever pillars because they kind of hold up the foundation of, you know, censorship. Whereas the gates, the gates are what's keeping you out of like, you know, the juicy stuff, you know, that's but pretty ooh, good imagery less, right there. Um, I like that. So the first gate I wanted to talk about in particular was, um, um, uh, as we started with Harpy Lady, um, the human body. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot 
of uh, cards end up being censored, you know, just because they, they seem a little risque. Uh, Harpy Lady seems to be like a very prominent example of like an archetype that just always ends up be becoming censored. Like, and, and then when you see like, you know, the Japanese card art, you're just like, wow, like this yeah, is such a yeah. big change. Like they went from like, you know, very, you know, sexy looking, like, you know, ladies, very alluring to very prude, uh, spandex wearing jazzercise harpies, you know. They are very jazzercise. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I never put that connection together. That's so true. And they're called harpies. <laughs> so yeah, no, no wonder... You know, like people are kind of questioning. Well, I, as a kid, I didn't really know. I thought that's what they're supposed to look like. Watching the TV yeah. show, just like as a kid, I go, oh, okay, this is normal. This is how they originally made it until I, you know, became a teenager. And like I, I looked online, noticed that there was actually a few differences with the OCG or like, you know, the anime in Japan versus over here. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. like four kids like censored so much mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. changed, you know, what Yu-Gi-Oh looked like to me. And yeah. now I just see it as as different, like you know, you know, thing. Where like, okay, the OCG. I see, like, I I like to look at like artwork from like overseas, or like I like to see like the show in Japan now, like subbed versus dub and stuff, because mm -hmm. you get to see the original content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like it's a different show completely when you look at it in the dubbing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Saw that. Well, that's because a lot of uh, context, you know, in the Japanese language gets lost in translation. That's like one of the very big things behind yeah. that, too. They have to change a lot of like different dialogue to kind of suit the American audiences or whatever audience, you know, you're they're showing that. Show or hell, to. even cultural languages or cultural, you know, very big cultural differences or observations are just oh, like, yeah. you know, sort of translated for American audience because simply they wouldn't understand that's more catered to you know people in japan something that they would have more of an understanding for you right know I mean? right yeah. yeah but i think i think we can take all of this to a a, a show topic in a little bit how about that we'll, we'll come back we'll circle back we'll Definitely. just have to talk about the show as a whole. oh heck yeah yeah uh, what's, I, what's what's your so you got your first what's so your the, second so yeah. the first one was the human body mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh oh, yeah. the second one is and this is a very big one very prominent although a lot of people overlook this is religion and mm, one yeah. very like it, it's very broad the way I kind of just sort of single it down to a, a single word such as religion. But it w what I kind of like, you know, sort of point out as examples, you, you'll start to see why um, they tend to censor out a lot of uh, horns like, you know, depictions of like beings with horns. Ergo, why we have, uh, you know, the, the what is it? The uh, sorry, what is it? The fiend type? As opposed oh. to demons, uh -huh. you know? yeah. So of course we're not gonna call them demons because you know, little kids don't know what demons are. Instead, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll just sort of lower it a bit to fiend, as you will. You know, I actually never put that two, two and two together until you just said that. I had no exactly. idea that it actually was a demon touche. Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Yeah. And um, another thing, uh, and not it's not necessarily like you know just demons in particular. You know, you could sort of uh point examples to like you know more angelic themes like the biggest one the biggest one people tend to forget uh just straight up monster reborn mm -hmm, monster mm -hmm. reborn like you know the original uh you know first what people think about with monster reborn of course is like you know the red gem with like you know the wings on the side whatever it's beautiful but the original monster reborn was just straight up supposed to be an unk you know, it's supposed to be uh, of uh, Egyptian origin, supposed to be like the sign of rebirth, mm -hmm, uh, if mm -hmm, you will. Mm -hmm. There go monster reborn. Um, but they saw this as a little too religious, I guess. You know, so they decided to take out any sort of depictions of uh, religious uh, features out of the show. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I, I guess that's why we have all that stuff today. Not only that, but they removed every halo, every angel or every car that's depicted as like, you know, a heavenly person or, or creature has uh, usually a halo or if something is dead for example treeborn frog uh that's supposed to actually the original artwork actually has a halo above it and anything that has a halo is just removed entirely that is true with with the horns as well so really horns like and halos are just not present in the tcg whatsoever horns are replaced by these weird blue orbs in most fiend monsters you'll notice that in like a lot of like the artworks i forgot what the main monster was um he has like a green face and he has he wears like a bunch of robes. I think he's like one of the main Hades um, or whatever. No, Hades something. Yeah. He's one of the main Dark um, Ruler Hades. Yeah, he was he's one example of like, you know, where they take out like the horns 
and just replace them with orbs. You're right. And yeah. then you use them as a poster child for a lot of like trap cards or a lot of cards yeah. relating to fiend type monsters or dark type monsters. And uh, you notice that he has like, you know, these weird blue balls up on his head and stuff. But in the original artwork, when you see that, you see these really badass horns that just kind of curl up in a certain like bull like way. And, and I kind of like miss that. I feel like we, 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 we're we're mature enough to handle horns and halos, right, guys? Well, clearly exactly. we are. I was gonna say on the topic of Monster yeah. Born and uh, Hades or Hades, Hades, however yeah, you say yeah. his name, um, they were both released in the Lost Art promo, right? I believe so. Yeah. So I think we are now. We've we've been acknowledged that we can handle that <laughs> <We> can, <laughs> after yeah. all these years, after so many years playing Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, for example, like the Exodia pieces finally were released back over here with yeah. the pentagram in the background. Mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, right and there. they look good. Those, those printings look good. I'm they glad I got amazing. a set. That's yeah. interesting. And like, you know, before I go on to the next one, like a very big thing, and you're going to like this a lot, you know, Ooh. Dark Magician, of course, like is a very big example to that, you know, censorship legacy. Uh, any sort of depictions of like, as you said, pentagrams or um, in Dark Magician Girl's case, you know, her cleavage. Or cleavage, you know, th- th- those yeah. would be taken out of the like, short you know, the skirt product in the TCG. So, yeah. oh, and the shorter skirt. Yeah, you're right. It, you know, explains why everybody loves you know Dark Magician Girl. They even make it you know a funny cameo, or like they make a, a funny mention in the Zexel anime, where uh, one of the characters I forgot exactly what because it's been a very long time since I watched the show. But there was a you know one of the characters I was you know googling over the Dark Magician Girl because the person saw a statue. You know what? No, it was GX. I remember now. It was Cyrus <laughs> in the yeah. So in the dub, his name is Cyrus. I I, I don't know what his his uh oh, sub yeah. name is. No, because there's a whole episode where they he duels the Dark Magician Girl. Yeah, he duels yeah. the Dark Magician Girl and like like he goes goo goo gaga over it and like like you wonder. <laughs> I mean, you understand? Yeah, the Dark Magician Girl is, is you know she's a pretty drawing, you know, but like you didn't really understand why because they always like i mean the extreme that a lot of these characters would go for a lot of other people go for these cards because they look really good you never really understood until you realized that you know they censored her cleavage and they made her you know less revealing and you know like i get it she's a pretty card and stuff but not as pretty as you know overseas <laughs> if see, that makes any sense i got gotcha. you see yeah. and that's kind of the thing you know before we move on that's kind of the thing with dark magician girl uh uh j- just kind of the fact that she she kind of has like this legacy behind her right she's always going to be seen as this poster girl and she's always going to be seen as like you know the sort of dare i say it sex icon for Oh. yeah <laughs> And, you know, for her yeah. to just kind of... No, I do. Grandpa. <laughs> and just for, her, just for her to... You Where's know, my medicine? <laughs> and just, just for her to just, you know, get the, the ban hammer of, like, you know, censorship, just for her to give her... Or just for, you know, censorship to sort of give her a lengthier skirt to remove the pentagram and just to say, hey, cover yourself up. <laughs> You know, you said that like a bouncer at a club. I mean, hey, cover yourself it's up. It's kind of cover what yourself it is. up, girl. And th- guess what that bouncer's name is? Four kids. Touche, touche. Yeah. Yeah, at least not up until I think I believe 2011. Uh, I think four kids actually got sued a while ago, a few years ago. Yeah, there was this. Uh, they got sued for, uh, I guess, like selling Yu-Gi-Oh merchandise without the authorization of like the creators and mm-hmm. stuff overseas. They gave them permission to dub the show. They never gave them permission to license that stuff anywhere oh, wow. else. And so, like, and all those shitty toys you found at Walmart, you know, like those shitty, Guardian. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I think those were definitely official. I don't know, actually. But there was a couple other things, like, you know, those bootleg DVDs and those bootleg magazines oh. with, like, kind of pictures of Yu Gi and stuff. And you, you know, it's Yu Gi Oh, but it's like they try to alter it a little bit. Yeah. I read I the think, DVDs. Yeah. Yeah. I think they were responsible for that, too interesting yeah. interesting and they got mad and so like where's our cut of the money because you know you made hello money from you know making all this extra merchandise selling it you know without our knowledge and now that like they had this whole like little fuss now four kids has i don't think four kids has anything to do with um Yu Gi Oh at the moment i think another company has the dubbing rights now yeah hmm. interesting yeah all right all right hold on What's the third? We got two, right? Okay. Oh yeah, so, we got we got two. Um, yeah. just, just to remind people, the, two the, gates. the second gate was religion, and okay. we were talking about revived King Hades. One thing that I kind of wanted to point out with revived King Hades, if you also notice, his uh, he's holding a chalice which has some green liquid in the TCG version. Uh-huh. In the OCG version, he has red liquid, and it's supposed to be red wine. Which leads me to my next gate. Okay. The next gate of censorship is 
alcohol. Oh, a very big mm-hmm. one. Very I prominent. like alcohol. Um, a lot of the times, lot. um, cultural differences will play, you know, kind of a a key, uh, you know, factor into you know the reasons why they you know censor a lot of things. Uh, for the it, for the reason with the uh, the 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 sex appeal is mostly because like it's kind of a natural thing. Like it, it's sort of a social norm. Even in like kids' cartoons, they show like you know scenes of like you know girls getting their skirts lifted up. You know, because kids kids do that. It's, it's really yeah, especially ja- yeah, especially Japanese cartoons yeah. too. But we'll we'll get more on the audience in a little bit. Yeah. I, got some, I got some deep. Don't disrespect. Don't disrespect topics. But, Japan's animation. But one of the biggest <laughs> cultural norms is the imbibement imbibement of alcohol. Like you know, anywhere you go, like you know, alcohol is pretty much like a celebrated cultural norm in Japan. I'm pretty sure they sell them in vending machines, like out yeah, in public. Yeah, they like, so. they like the booze. Exactly. So um, a lot of the times with these cards uh, in the OCG that depict uh, you know alcohol or like you know imbibement of alcohol, they tend to you know replace them with key features. One of the big cards that got hit really hard with this censorship was Baguska. Um, Baguska, uh-huh. as Baguska. you know, the terribly tired tapir uh, is, uh, you know, just sort of just sleeping on there with a bunch of pillows around him. But if you look at the OCG artwork, you see that that pillow under his arm is actually a big bottle of sake, and he's just yeah. surrounded by, like, you know, all sorts of uh, cans and bottles of booze, as you see here on the computer. Yeah, we'll bring like, it up on the screen. Hey, for yeah. Baguska... Yeah. I had a little question. Um, does his name is his name different in the OCG? His name is different in the OCG. Um, let me look this up. Sorry. Uh, his name is Mud Sleeping Demon Beast Baguska. That Mud sounds... Sleeping Demon Beast. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds so cool. That is that is a direct translation, <laughs> but nonetheless, he's supposed to be this drunkard. Tapier. All right, we got to troll every one of the next regionals. We all have to come in with a Baguska, and it's whenever we summon him, we got to drop that name. <laughs> I'm mud down. sleeping. Mud team. sleeping demon beast. Demon beast. Oh yeah. God, I summon awesome. my mud slinging yeah. demon beast exactly. in attack mode. Overlay for oh, no, four. Wait. You want to actually summon him in defense, right? I forgot. Oh, yeah, you do. <laughs> you want to summon in defense? Yeah. <laughs> in defense mode. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got Sleep that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, Baguska is a really big one. Another example, and it's actually one of my favorite cards. I'll I'll bring this up right here, and um, it's one of my favorite cards. Uh, Shoten, oh, he brought, he's got the binder got out the for binder. those listening. Those listening audio audioly. He has the binder. Oh, audio the binder. Work. One of my favorite cards, actually, if you guys want to take a look at that, Ooh. Shuten Doji. Um, this was a card that I used back then. Uh, when I ran like an old school zombie deck, it was kind of an interesting tech that I ran because it involved like, you know, getting banished resources, but I digress. Um, I'm, as you know, I'm always into a lot of like, you know, the Japanese uh, local folklore aesthetic, you know, mm, which yeah. is why I have the Shiranui's, the Mayakashi's, you know, will always hold a special place in my heart. But um, as you know, uh, in the Japanese version, uh, they changed it quite a bit because as, as if you see his gourd, you know, it's it's just kind of a plain looking gourd. But in the Japanese version, you can actually see the uh, kanji character for uh, booze or alcohol, sake. Yeah. You know, oh, that's cool. So they do take out a lot of like, you know, just the subtle things in which I personally don't you know, see why, you know, I feel like a kid isn't really going to necessarily pick up on that. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, well, they wouldn't, obviously, yeah. any kid wouldn't, but I guess the fact that it's just there blatantly of course, is the problem. Yeah. Can I, can I, okay, this guy reminds me of a combination of uh, Sabretooth and then that, that other red X-Men villain who was like red with the uh, silver. Omega Red. Omega Red, yeah, Omega he looks red, like that. Yeah, he looks cool. Sabretooth. He, he is pretty cool. Yeah. He's actually one of my favorite uh, zombie types uh, in, in the entire game. Yeah, one was that banish two zombies cool. from the graveyard, draw a card. Yeah. Like, that's pretty good. And then um, take one banish, put it at the top of your deck, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Only, good for sure. Only one, but though. Like, you only have to maybe. be one. But, you, all right. Oh, yeah, I was going to uh, ask, uh, do you think they also just censor any kanji? letterings and in, in general because i i know they do that at least they did that for the anime back when i was a kid i know they they basically censored the hell out of the show so it was unrecognizable in the anime yeah. i think so yes like but, if there's any present of but um as far as i'm concerned um i think there's a card um I believe it's called Fudin Kazan. I, I might be wrong. It might still have the kanji in the background, but I, I don't think so. And then there's also the, um, 
what is it? The element ninjas where it was like water ninja and it, it would just have like the word water in the back. Oh yeah, no, they do have it. They used to have the kanji for that. They don't have it anymore. Or in the OCG, I think they had the kanji. I could be wrong. I let's could be pull, wrong, let's pull it up. Let's, let's pull, pull it up. up. Yeah. Um, let's, let's take a look at uh, these cards. Air ninja. And we'll confirm I, I might that. Be, I'm, I might not be able to pull it up. I, I I don't even remember what the card's name is. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's move on. Let's yeah. move on. We'll look we'll, for it later. If anything. we'll look for it later. Yeah. They're ninjutsu it, cards. Well, it, potentially, if us in the future know what it is, we can put a picture of it here and yeah. Now, so. Definitely. Yeah. We'll we'll, we'll show you guys about, for yeah. those viewing and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, that's the third uh, gate of censorship, alcohol. Yeah. So hold on, we got we got we got sex scandal. Let me <laughs> sex scandals, we got sex appeal, we got sex appeal, drugs, our booze, and alcohol, religious yeah. and booze. Okay, no okay, no what's, drugs. Right, hit me with the fourth. I'm excited. So the I'll final one I personally like to call um, violence. Okay, and this can be generalized to uh, guns. Uh, or just depictions of dying, suffering, or anything like that. Blood. You know, they tend to change. Uh, yes, blood, uh, gore, or you know, just again depictions of violence. Mm -hmm. They tend mm -hmm. to change a lot of those, you know, small details. You know, just to sort of keep kids from like you know being scared of a lot of things. Or you know, if you just want to make a gun look like a laser. You know, as yeah. per example, we have the very classic barrel dragon. As you all know, that is the very very strong example of censorship, mostly because in the OCG, it's just a dragon with a six chamber revolver on yeah, its head. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, and it's pretty cool. And they just decided to change it into a uh, cool looking uh, laser gun, in which, don't get me wrong, looks really cool. But we'll definitely get to this in, in a bit. The mm -hmm. show, yeah. when they tried to uh, sort of make the changes, Oh man, it just looks like cheap Photoshop. And you could see just right when it cuts to the next frame, just right before the next frame, just one frame, you see its original, like, you know, artwork, like the actual uh -huh, gun without uh -huh. the uh, the Photoshopped overlay. Oh, wow. Yeah, that you episode know. has not aged well, trust yeah. me. I've seen like <laughs> clips of it on YouTube and it's hilarious. <laughs> Wait, so that's, that's, are you talking about the bor Boral Dragon specifically? Barrel yeah, Dragon. Yeah, Barrel Dragon. Yeah. Yeah, so, barrel. yeah, not, not Barrel Uh So, Barrel Dragon, um, is that also the same episode with Bandit Keith and the gun? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. Okay. And that, that's something which he we're doesn't definitely going to talk gun. about later right, is, you know, right. sort of depictions of guns. A little preview, a little preview. But um, uh, the thing is, is that like, you know, Barrel Dragon isn't the only one to, you know, have that. If anything, I think uh, Rockets are starting to take up that legacy of like, you know, yeah. censorship involving firearms. I uh, mean, I Magical think that, Musketeers. That's a huge that's one because those cards yeah. are so much yeah. cooler with like, uh, I guess they have guns, but they're just different. And they'd also have the, the names aren't as, what, the name in the OCG is so much cooler. I can't remember. Uh, Sky, no, no, that's. No, you said like Magi Bullet or something. Magi right? Bullets, yeah. Yeah. Magi Bullets. Yeah. So I guess the word bullet is too hardcore for us. So they. Yeah. Took that out. Yeah. Mm. Same thing with uh, I think in the uh, rocket archetype, I think there's a there's a monster called Bullet Dragon, but I think in the TCG Bullet they Dragon. named it Barrett Dragon. I could be yeah. wrong. No, They're all they supposed to be guns and stuff. You know, I just you know uh, looking at that Barrel Dragon oh, picture yeah. that you have on your your screen and just thinking we're talking about rockets. I feel like rockets are kind of like the spiritual successor to like the Barrel, barrel dragon. dragon. Like yeah, yeah. like it, like they're the, they're the spiritual OG yeah. rocket archetype. Yeah, he is because he was a dragon, right? He was a dragon. Yeah, he's Actually, a dragon. No, he was a machine. Yeah. Machine. But honestly, that wouldn't be too far off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's it's in his name, Barrel Dragon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's kind of a cop out, though. They should but, just call it a Barrel Machine. If it was a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is this? What, what is, is this? this? <laughs> I was looking for a dragon, but I got a machine, a Barrel it's, Machine. It's terrible. It's However, terrible. we it doesn't stop at guns. Um, mm -hmm. Any sort of depictions of like you know violence or suffering for that matter. One particular example. It's kind of a it's kind of a subtle one. A lot of people did not really catch this, but you know I I was kind of interested in this one. And it's the card um, Aqua Mirror Cycle. Mm -hmm. And it is a uh, trap card from the uh, the Gishki archetype. I don't know if you guys recall. Uh, Joe has a Gishki deck. Oh yes, yes, he does. we can link to it down at the bottom. Yeah. Too. So, um, if you guys see here, you have you know just just the artwork for Aquamarine Cycle. You see, um, I think her name is Gishki Emilia. Like just up front, you know, she's kind of in a sort of dazed and confused state. While you have Noelia in advance, like you know, just in the uh -huh, uh -huh. just in the artwork. But if you look at the OCG, you notice that what? Uh, Emilia all of a sudden is suffering. She's dying. 
you know, so oh, she did. Of course, they're going to remove any of those like small details, you know, just to make sure kids aren't like. That's oh, not a small that. detail. Her, she's dying, it's, bro. That's I mean, not it's, a, it's small a subtle detail. detail, but like a lot of people like just subtle. Kind of overlook she's this subtle. She's crying in the OCG one versus like she's just a dead asleep in the other one. A, a lot like of people corpse. overlook this card, and then the uh, images will be posted for you guys who course, cannot yeah. see. Yeah, but yeah, this one's I, I feel like is a very strong one that resonates with me in regards to like you know the censorship ones because it, it yeah. just kind of tells you. You know, a, a lot of, uh, you know, artists in Japan aren't really scared to show, like, you know, depictions of dying because yeah. it's such a real thing in life. Yeah, you know? yeah. So. Well, the age gap for, for Yu-Gi-Oh! is a little different in Japan. Over there, I feel like they try to target some more uh, older kids, you know, kids that are 14, 15 years old versus over here in, uh, in America, at least. Uh, the, a lot of the cards when you buy them in packs it says for kids six and up you know you just see yeah, the six yeah, plus good point yeah and so it makes sense to you know dumbing down some of the artwork or you know making it less violent less sexy less you know less dep- depiction of you know alcohol or whatever uh, because you know they're trying to target for kids not to teenagers so, yeah uh, I mean, you make a good point. Maybe then that's a quick segue into. I mean, are are those your four? Are those your four? Pillars? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Those are the four gates oh, of gates. censorship. Oh, sorry, I forgot. We got, pillars, we... gates. You know, either way, you know. It, it, it All right. Every time we're on this gates. podcast, we're going to need four pillars or four gates or something. Four pillars or four gates, yeah. but. Yeah, those I those I just kind of came up with just off the top of my head today and I was just like I kind of have to put this into like a a sort of theory or a study or a a sort of j- just put these into words, you It's know? like a PowerPoint presentation, exactly, but, but, yeah. but audio and visually nicely done. Yeah, thank you. And you gave us an example of each one, so thank you for that. Yeah, exactly. I had no idea for any of that. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But um let's continue the conversation you were yes. just talking about um about the audience, right? So audience. you you're making a good point about uh how it says six and up on the on the on the booster packs. Versus... Oh yeah, but we all know that's not really true. That's really, <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, some kids are still playing Yu Gi Oh. You know, young kids are like six years old, seven years old. But who is the majority of Yu Gi Oh players that you really see during locals and regionals and? They're in their twenties. Yeah, generally everybody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's like in their twenties now. 30s, Everyone yeah. who grew up with the with the game is already still either playing it at this age, you know. Do you actually know what the uh, data is behind the target demographic in Japan? N- not by heart, like no. Like actual ages? <laughs> like Go- nothing like that? Because no. I feel like um, I, I might have seen somewhere that it might their their target audience might have started at like 10 years of age. I, I could be wrong. Something, yeah. Well, I mean, the like you said before, like the culture is very different over there. You yeah. know, there are some things that are more accepting over there than they are over here in America. Mm-hmm. Vice versa, you know, when they try to target to, a, you know, let's say it's still a generally an older kid audience yeah if that makes any sense and they're not targeting you know little preschoolers they're targeting you know kids that are, can read that can that understand the the fundamentals of gameplay card games and stuff like that because they're trying to sell a card game at the end of the day so they want you know to attract a certain audience you know and that's their demographic and when it moved over here the demographic just kind of went down a little lower to i think Six years of age. Well, it came in what? What when, when like late nineties, early two thousands is when it came. So Yu Gi Oh, yeah, Yu Gi Oh, I think I believe uh, came out or you know it was a thing in nineteen ninety eight, and like that was just OCG. That's when they uh, show that. Well, that's when Yu Gi Oh was completely different check though. Check the back of the Yu-Gi-Oh that's when, card. Yeah, check the back <laughs> of the Yu Gi Oh card. I think it's ninety eight though, but we know it's. Uh, I don't think it says it, anything on the back. Oh, it used to. I, I think it might be ninety eight. Yeah, I think it was. But yeah. regardless, regardless, yeah. we all know we all know who we were during that time. Yeah. So um, that was also like we were, we were coming off of the days of like Happy Meal toys and like and just uh, you know like, CDs and like movies made to make toys. You know, movies being changed like Batman. One of the Batman movies being changed significantly just to make more toys. You know, we came in that world of like of. of Kids are buying crap. You know I, mean, I mean, GI Joe, Ninja Turtles, all those yeah, were yeah. Transformers. They were all marketing tools just to sell things to kids. Yeah, Power Rangers, yeah, like Power one Rangers of my favorite too. shows. Like if I didn't have the toys in the, and I know you're down too. The Super like, Sentai yeah, series, exactly. Yeah. But um, you know, so of course I'm excited when the show comes in from Japan, which is now starting to get a, a slightly older audience because they've been watching it for you know for a longer time, including season zero, which which we'll get to in a second. Yeah. Um. 
you know, they come and bring their show over. They're like, well, we got to make a, you know, kids, are, kids are hot. Yeah. Kids are hot. Like they're not going to understand. It's like, don't say it like that. <laughs> but like, you're not, yeah, probably I should say like that. Touche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man. Okay. Anyways, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. kid, like kids, the kids in general are buying stuff. Like they're, they're the ones making the money. So, or not making the money, spending, making them money. Yeah. Uh, so they come in, they transplant the show. Uh, they change it, you know, from being all about, death and about being resurrected and all these weird like and like people inside you uh, inside your brain tra- transforming into, into different personas into shadow realms and like other you know much more subtle differences and subtle like things are much dumbed down so what i'm, what I'm basically getting at is it makes sense that our our audiences at the core are different because when it came it was older plus they changed what it was really meant what it was really bad at the, at the fundamentals and they never really changed the demographic for this card game or just the, the product or you know the franchise itself they still kept it to targeting to six plus year old people or kids you know yeah and i think yeah. they're still doing that which i think is a mistake because i mean like let me ask you guys like where can you watch uh brains in the dub version uh crunchy roll that's not a plug as a kid though like as a, as a kid, kid who doesn't yeah. have a who like doesn't have an ipad yet or whatever or, like needs to get I, hooked on this early i believe there's a cable service there's like a channel that shows like you know kids shows i think uh, a particular cable network bought the um the localization rights to uh well not just the localization but i want to say maybe the um the broadcasting rights to the localized version of it mm-hmm. nicktoons Oh, I want to say it's Nicktoons, but because they did have Nicktoons Zexel. had Ze- Ar- Arc V too. I think they had Zexel and Arc V. Is so I'm pretty Jetix sure. still a thing. Y'all remember Jetix? Jetix? I don't remember Jetix. Jetix. I remember. I no, think... I remember it. No, no, no. It's not that. No, oh, dude, they've like, been dead. I yeah, because uh, Jetix was like this uh, sort of. Uh, it's Disney. It, it, yeah, it was like a subsidiary to Disney where they just showed um, like kids shows and stuff like that, oh, okay. and they ended up actually getting their own network. But I think they went through like a whole bunch of like rebranding. So they I, also I went know. through a lot. Of, like that was their little anime thing for kids yeah. too. So they had uh, what's that show with the yellow robot? The yellow they had Beyblade on there for sure. They had Beyblade. Yeah. Metabots. Metabots. That's yeah, right. yeah, that's Metabots right. Was good. Metabots was amazing, guys. Yeah. I also really liked um, which it was. I don't think it was an anime. I think American, but it was kind of kind of like at the same time as Metabots was Cubics. Yeah, you know I remember show? Cubics. I yeah, that show a lot. Was that a Japan show? That was a, that was a show from Korea. 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 Okay. How do you know? Touche. <laughs> I'm glad we have you on the podcast <laughs> Thank today. Thank you for like, being on yeah. the podcast. We sound like a bunch I'm of chumps. I'm a well of knowledge and I'm yeah. willing to learn. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> well, this is how you know we're real about it. You know, we're coming through our experiences and, you know, kind of showing you what we know for sure with, you know, 15 minutes of research too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Um, okay, cool. So uh, let's talk Let's talk a little bit more about, I mean, I, I, I mean, audience, anything else got anything on, on the audience? as a whole um um not really other than you know you know we mentioned before that you know older well, kids one thing i wanted to say is that um in regards to like audience in regards to the consumer side like mm-hmm. saying the ocg like you know the card game um i think the resale market is a little bit different more along the lines of the fact that japanese audiences don't necessarily care about resale i could be wrong in the case of like card games but i know in like novelty items like video games like old video game consoles um you know the japanese don't care about resale market and um i want to say it could be the same thing for um you know their their trading card you know market Mm -hmm. i could be wrong but interesting i never thought about that way either well isn't it i also heard at one point that like the reason why one of the big reasons why the OCG and TCGs are differently, and especially in terms of price, like when a card comes out in the TCGs, like in terms of astronomically, like a Phantasme, you know, right now is still like an $80, $90 card versus in the OCG when he came out, like he was max of like 20 30 Like I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know that specific, but that's like the example that I was, I was told as well. Yeah. So um, it's generally cheaper. Over it's, yeah. It's generally cheaper, yeah. but I was also told, and this is where this is more of a conversation for debate, not a fact, but, um, the people in Japan, like they also have so many options for card games and so many options for different media that if something's too expensive, they'll just stop playing. They'll play something else. True, and like, yeah. and, they, and they've had, they've been burned that way before where cards are just so short printed that they're so expensive and the market just tanked. That makes sense. It really does for, you know, um, what would they want to sell as many cards as possible? And the only way to do that to, you know, keep people, you know, invested in buying these cards is to keep them cheap. 
yeah no one's exactly. gonna want to buy these cards if they're too expensive if it's too expensive to play then they lose a market or they lose like you know a certain audience that can you know potentially give them money and so a little money here and there from a lot of people is probably better in their eyes versus you know you know what's it called whale or whaling yeah or, japan has like a very big um like what is it like a whaling culture when it comes yeah. to like a uh, gotcha games or yeah like, you know blind bag blind box whatever the case may be like it's a ve- that if anything that's what they celebrate a whole lot more than the resale market they're mm-hmm. selling on the psyche of the person's desire to open up something that you know surprise you but know? you know why that is right uh japan by law are actually supposed to um uh disclose uh what is it um uh probabilities in which you pull these yeah yeah they're supposed to disclose like you know the chances and oh, stuff like that whereas in tcg <clears throat> like over here uh they don't necessarily have to do that they could just be all like hey we're selling you these cards yeah whatever every, <clears throat> everyone in japan it's a law oh my gosh Everyone wants yeah. Trump's tax records, and I just want to know stop and strike pull rate ratios. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's what I'm demanding. There you go. That's the word ratios, like pulling ratios. <coughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Good. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to. We've been kind of touching on the subject a little bit. Um, let's go back to the show. So we kind of touch a little bit on pieces here and there. The Bandit Keith episode was huge. Touch a little bit on Harvey's. Um, what else do you guys see in terms of the show in terms of censorship? What was changed? What were the big topics? You know, let me give you a hint. Okay. Hold it right there. <laughs> Are you holding a gun or a finger? I'm pointing at you. Don't move. <laughs> see, that's one of the big things. Like this, that's exactly why I wanted to bring up like barrel dragon, you know, yeah. was, you know, the big thing was just sort of like watching the show and the anime being, First exposed to like, you know, the uh, the localized version, mm-hmm. you know, and then all of a sudden you see like just very bad like video graphics overlaid on like a fully animated feature. And not only that, like, believe it or not, they just took the screenshot and kept it still just so they could keep the uh, the Photoshop graphics on there like flawlessly. But oh my as gosh. you notice, like, you know, just before the cut one frame, you do see the uh, the stuff underneath. <sighs> but again, that's just my passion towards that. I would also imagine thing. that they cut a lot of footage from the original if they can't seem to edit it or if they can't make a seamless way to make it look good, you know? Yes, they probably true. just cut scenes and just change dialogue completely to to kind of like, you know, change the direction of the show because they can't show certain things. Yeah, yeah. And so... Well, one thing that they deci- decided to take out of the uh, localized version was uh, Bakura violently eating a steak. Yeah, mostly, I remember mostly that. Because they ha- mostly because it just looked too... like. So there was a scene... Yeah, in, uh, I don't know anything to tell, so, teach me. Preach. preach. Alright, do you want to put a gif on the thing? Yeah, so we'll go ahead and put like a little like gif of this here. You'll be able to see it. But You'll know what we're talking about. I won't about. be able to. You gotta but explain this to me. I see, yeah, it's, um, it's really there's funny. There's this episode where uh, Bakura nah, is communing nah, nah, with... Nah. Um, I, I forgot who like the overall like final <laughs> evil villain is like... He, he ends up, like, making, like, a dark deal with someone, and he just, like, he, he's one of those, like, very evil villain scumbags by this point. Uh-huh. And it, it's so cliche to the point to where you see him eating a steak. But, like, the way he's eating it, he just takes the whole thing by fork, and then he just, like, violently rips out of it, and then it's just, like, Ugh! and then you just see all the juices, all the stuff, like, just spilling out, it's just... Like, this wasn't necessary to have in here, but at the same time, it wasn't necessary to oh cut. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's making me hungry, actually. Exactly. Ugh. If anything, it just makes me starve for, it a, makes for me a good starve. old filet mignon. Oh, <laughs> Tell that to the vegan. For some action! <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. But, yeah, um, that, that was just one of, like, the other things in the show. What else did they take out in the show? Like, of course, guns. Uh, there's yeah, a the scene... concept of death. Yeah, so there's yeah. actually a scene, uh, it reminds me, because you were playing with the Millennium Rod, or should I say the Millennium Dagger. Oh yeah, thing. let's touch on what we're joined by today, guys. Oh uh, yeah. So. so we try to keep a cool little prop each episode. This time we're joined by the two little, uh, or three little golden uh, Millennium items, right? That's what they're called? Brent has the Millennium Puzzle. You know it. Toby has the Millennium Rod, or Millennium Dagger in Japan, and I have the Millennium Ring. Nice. In which we were going to talk about like a scene that was taken completely out of context. Yeah. Was an episode where um, Merrick is about to kill um, his, uh, what is it? His, uh, his father. His, no, no, his right. Well, I'll, I'll get to that one. Oh, but, wait. Uh, he's about to kill his, uh, his, one of his best friends, Odeon, right? Oh, I think that's yeah. His name. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, you, you just see Merrick 
uh, just sort of standing over his bed. You know, he sort of explains that he's going to send him to the Shadow Realm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But really in the anime, you see this long, drown-out scene of him sneaking up to Odeon, standing over his bed, and then you see the Millennium Rod. But it's not a Millennium Rod. He pulls the bottom part out. It's a false bottom hiding a dagger. And he's actually about to stab Odeon, but Ishizu shows up and, you know, eventually... Or it wasn't Ishizu that pops out. I think it was was just himself. He just snaps out of it. That's right, yeah. He just snaps out of it and he's like... And then he stops himself and then he sheets the guy. My mind is telling me to kill you. But nonetheless, it sort of removes, like, a very big chunk of context from the show. Like, you know, exactly... Like, a very big item. Yeah, I had no idea. changes the properties of the item. Yeah, that is completely... That's crazy. Yeah. And like uh, going back to that scene with the with the dad, we already mentioned that you know uh, in the original one, Merrick actually kills his father oh, using yeah. the dagger. The dagger uh, actually takes control of him, and that's the evil spirit that's within the dagger. You know, it's uh, the so evil. So I was ask about that. That so th- there's a dragon within the dagger. Uh, yeah, there is a spirit within the dagger, as is there is a spirit in the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. puzzle and okay. the ring as well. So there's right, we yeah. we are all holding haunted items right now. Pretty much. So yeah. I, I remember <laughs> at the very uh, we're gonna digress real quick. Yeah. This is more because I'm, I'm getting so much knowledge right now. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, you're so I remember at the very end of like the the first like arc of Yu Gi Oh, not arc, but the first like set the characters right. Yes. That ends with them like in Egypt, and we see the flashbacks with like Kaiba versus Yu Gi like days ago, and like that's the whole ending, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I get that part of like how he ended up in the puzzle. But, like, do they go in that depth and how do those other two characters wound up in there or those other two spirits wound up in the two items? Like, as much as they go into that one at any point in the show that we missed? So, in the case of the Millennium Ring, um, the spirit that, that's contained in the Millennium Ring is actually a person known as the Thief King Bakura. Uh-huh. And Bakura is actually his descendant. Okay, okay. Um, in the case of the Rod, it was just Merrick's dark side from, like, all the Dagger. times he was just, like, destined to be a... Um, a gravekeeper, even though he didn't want to, he just wanted a simple life. But like his dad was just kind of like you know the, the right. asshole father that was like, "You're gonna do this, and I'm gonna carve stuff on your back with a knife." Little the did y'all been know, in the that business of the tomb keeping back. since your pappy and your pappy's pappy and your pappy's pappy pappy, and you will too. And when you have a kid, he's gonna follow the same route as all of us. But That's yeah. what I would imagine that again conversation that going with Merrick's dad. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's yeah. just a whole lot of like very important context just taken out of what's and that's an why okay show. Yeah, that's and good. that's why Merrick is going out for vengeance because he's actually trying to ki- in the original one he's actually trying to kill Yugi or Yami Yugi or Ratem whatever you want to call him. He's actually uh, out for vengeance. And he's trying. Why? To- why does he want to kill him? Because Be- of his destiny as a his grave destiny. Keeper. He blames uh... the Pharaoh for having to go through this destiny of having to be locked in under the ground and having these scriptures tattooed on him painfully and and be- basically keeping the tome. You know, it makes so much sense. And yeah, versus the you know when we watch a dub, you know the four kids version. Everyone, really- is, everyone is just sent to the shadow realm. Yeah, he's yeah, looking. No, yeah. he's looking for the god cards. No, he's looking for the god cards go, to yeah. kill the Pharaoh. He doesn't want to rule the world. He just yeah. wants to kill the Pharaoh, and once he's done with that, he'll be satisfied. But they don't. They, they never mention that in the uh, in the dub version. Huh. So that yeah, now it looks cooler, huh? Yu Gi Oh is so much you know darker. Yeah, and that's they, awesome. And they, yeah, and they keep the themes because Yu Gi Oh, as you know, if you don't know, a lot of uh, people probably do know at this point. But who knows? Uh, seasons, Tell them what they need to know. Season zero, uh, the infamous or not really infamous, but the famous uh, first uh, iteration of Yu Gi Oh where it was all about the story, characters, and many, many games, not just card games. And in that one, uh, Yugi would get possessed over by the Millennium Item, his puzzle, and uh, he would challenge any scumbags to a, a game of his choice. And um, as the title you know, claims it, Yu-Gi-Oh! Kina Games, he would always win against these games. And he would go through Shadow Games, because Shadow Games are still a thing, but only through the um, his Millennium Powers. Well, he does Shadow Games dark. means like your life or the Shadow Realm is on the line, right? Yeah, well, exactly. the someone, Shadow someone Realm... Someone has to die. Kind of. Yeah, so the Shadow Realm is fake, but the Dark Games are still a thing, where right, like, right. he uses the power of the Millennium Item to change a simple little game to you know something way bigger than it was. And... He usually uses, you know, uh, you know, the person's vanity or the person's greed or, or whatsoever, you know, whatever they're addicted to, to kind of like have them lose. Yeah, Basically. I remember my my first introduction to season zero was reading the manga and Shonen Jump first came out, like yeah. in America, and the I remember the one where he was like stabbing the 
like he, the dollars, the stack of bills, yeah, stack of bills yeah. against the guy. The like gambles up thinking like keep stabbing themselves and get as much as they can without stabbing himself. And of mm-hmm. course, like he pull, Yugi ends up winning somehow magically, and then the guy stabs the hand and ruins his hand. Yeah. So good. And so, following the themes of you know, you know, all those dark themes that you know from the, the season zero, they do still kind of follow up on the original Yu Gi Oh, but in different ways. Mm-hmm. But that's totally tamed in the American version in the dub. So all that is absent. So you don't really see the difference. That's why when people you know first hear Yu Gi Oh over here, they oh it's just a it's a cartoon about a card game, blah 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 blah, and then. They when they realize that someone tells them, oh hey no, Yu Gi Oh is about this dark pharaoh king that takes over a little boy's body to kill and or you know uh, punish uh, evil doers or like people that are just douchebags or scumbags in the show, mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. that are like looking up at skirts, you know. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get demonetized for this one, but it's, it's, <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get demonetized. But, but for, the, for yeah, for rape or something, you know, because yeah. there are characters in the show in season zero that do stuff like that. There are people in the show that are that come in gunpoint in a restaurant, and yeah, they, yeah and there's much the, more touchy subjects for sure. Yeah, so there's a lot of touchy subjects in there, and you're never gonna see that. But they changed the whole thing to. And what's funny that. is that like yeah. the end result to like you know Yugi battling these guys is like they're not very pleasant it's like these guys end up either like you know getting burnt or they just straight up being rendered into an invalid like it's, yeah it's kind yeah. of like it's messed bad. up it's to bad. think about and i think like, the best part of this is you know correct me if i'm wrong yeah. but in the original one i don't think little yugi remembers when he gets taken That's over right right, right. He doesn't yeah he there's is no partnership unaware. between the two of them yeah, yeah. The, he is unaware about the dark spirit that lies within the millennium item and uh, there's no, like, you know, buddy-buddy where they're talking to each other in the head. I mean, they yeah. didn't really do that in the beginning of the show either. Yeah. yeah remember, if you remember, show, yeah. yeah, they never really uh, communicated with each other. I think that was just a decision later down the road yeah. to kind of, like, you know, deepen their relationship and make them more caring and more, you know, fun. They also didn't make him grow in season zero, I don't think. Like, he didn't grow, like, he grows, like, four inches when he becomes Yugi. Like, oh, yeah. uh, or at least in the, in the manga, it doesn't really seem Yugi. like he becomes taller. He just comes, which makes it creepy because he's, like, this kid still, like, with his, like, thing, like, like the third eye thing and menacing eyes, like, trying to challenge you to a game. Like, fuck that. He also yeah. didn't have a nose in the manga for some reason. As oh, like, you're right. As, like, yeah. small Yugi. Uh-huh. A right. small Yugi. And then yeah. he just got a nose out of nowhere when he yeah. turned into the pharaoh. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, yeah, no, he was a pharaoh still. Yeah, he was still a pharaoh. Yeah, he was just the king of games. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and then yeah. um, I think towards like I want to say maybe like the end of season zero was when they started um getting into the uh, I, I want to say the Seto Kaiba arc or the uh, the dual monsters arc, where they introduced Seto Kaiba in which by the way he had green hair for some reason. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh yeah, but um <laughs> tapioca color. Tapioca color. Tapioca. Baku- green. Uh, no, not Bakura. His uh his brother Mokuba was uh, a little more, asshole but yeah he was more of an asshole <laughs> and he was a bit of a uh he was craftier when it came to like you know technology and stuff uh-huh. like that he and never got kidnapped exactly yeah he, he that's never got thing. kidnapped he never got kidnapped he was always <laughs> hanging out with these huge thugs that would protect him and stuff and he was a little brat yeah mokubo was a brat dude he would just like you're gonna get locked up in this cage and play my game and i think i remember if i remember correctly because i remember ordering a bunch of shonen jump as a kid but in one of the panels i uh i was reading for the shonen jump thing for Yu-Gi-Oh, i saw mokuba trapping either Janochi, which is joey in the dub and like his friends or something i think maybe even taya i forgot what her name was anzu anzu yeah anzu in the in the japanese one and uh tristan was honda honda, honda. i don't remember that because i can't remember his english name or his <laughs> yeah. life of me tristan is such a terrible name tristan one well, they're fake <laughs> names honda. they're fake those are the slave names <laughs> <laughs> anyways uh so yeah they get trapped into like this little mini maze and then they get trapped with like a huge thug guy who's like a serial killer and he's like i think he's naked i'm not sure if he's naked or not but he i think if i remember correctly he was naked and he was like he had a knife and he was just out to kill these kids and their their goal was to try to get out of the area and within a certain amount of time or else they would get destroyed or killed by this cannibal dude or like this serial killer guy yeah and uh, yeah, so there were like super dark themes. And when I was a kid watching Yu-Gi-Oh, I didn't know anything about like, you know, the dark themes within that. I just remember watching them play card games and I'm like, oh, I wonder when they're going to use a dark magician in the panel. And then I'm looking and then it's like serial killers like chasing teenagers yeah, from high school. And the best part too is like, I remember like the, sh- the Shonen Jump when it first came out, the first one came with the blue eyes. 
And like, that's right. there was nothing close to a blue eyes white dragon in that first manga you're reading. No, there you know was what not. I mean? <laughs> so no, close to there any, was not. Edition, there's nothing. You're talking about the ultimate, right? Ultimate. I think blue it was eyes ultimate blue eyes white dragon. I can't. I think it was. Yeah, I'm that was sure. probably my first time I subscribed to Shonen Jump because oh, I nice. really wanted that card. Oh, I just subscribed. I just bought it at the grocery store. You get it at Lucky's. I remember that. I think that's where I got it. Probably then. Nice. Food Max or Food for Less. There back you go. In the day, yeah. And one final thing, like on season zero, before we finish up, um, season zero uh, tend to cut out a lot of characters uh, that didn't really make the cut into season one. There's a character uh, who was a female. She was supposed to be like the love interest of like, you know, another character like within the existing cast. Her oh, name yeah. was Miho. And um, she could oh, be yeah, Miho anytime. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like she, she was kind of like a tertiary character. I think she ended up being um, Honda's love interest, actually. Yeah, like, or or maybe between uh Joey and uh, Tristan or Jonochi Honda, whatever. Yeah, before whatever Joey. Yeah, before Joey's sister became a thing, and before right. my Valentine Joey's sister was never a thing. Yeah, Joey's really? sister was never a thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. they just introduced her, and I think she was uh, supposed to be kind of like the replacement of that extra girl. Yeah, and so that's why, like, I think they focused on Tristan and you know Joey's sister to be a thing, kind of thing. Yeah, kind of thing. R.I.P. Miho. She was the original cutie at the time. I mean, my sister's well. blind, Yug. Yeah. That is the Yugi Bum line right there. My sister's blind. My sister's blind. <laughs> well, on that note, I think we've got one more topic to talk about. The one that everyone's been waiting for because it just recently announced, I think, this week. Uh, there was an update to the OCG ban list, oh. which kind of started this whole idea of why we should do this podcast, right? Like, yeah. Um, well, this episode. <laughs> and, and it's, uh, sorry, this episode. Yeah, too yeah this, this subject was the only reason why we started a podcast. <laughs> exactly. We hit you before with episode one on saving money just because we needed something else. Yeah. We just <laughs> needed to tell show you that we were more than just this one thing. Yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean, look, obviously, we've had a good conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, ban list just dropped. And it got us thinking overall the difference in the format, right? So uh, OCG is much more advanced because they have, I'm sorry, much more advanced in terms of the cards they can use because they have an extra couple sets on us. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get better reprints, I think, too. I think things are cheaper overall there. And there's like, I think cards are easier, more easily accessible. Bren, are you suggesting we play OCG? No, I'm Because not. I'm down. I will learn how to read kanji. No, I mean, that'd be interesting if we did do, like, an OCG ban list rule. But the problem is that, like, there's going to be so many more relevant cards because they're two sets ahead of us. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, we're, not, we're never going to have those cards. You're right. And then also, like, the importing, too. Yeah, exactly. It costs extra money. You yeah. know what? Let's just stick to TCG. <laughs> Back to square one again. Back to square one. Um, but anyways, there's been some changes to the ban list. So I have them up on my computer here. I'm going to pull them up. Um, and this kind of just shows you how different the format is. So. And also keep in mind this ban list for the OCG doesn't go live until July 1st. So. Yes, yes. Good call on that one. Um, so right off the bat, we have a Nightmare Mermaid. It's getting forbidden from Unlimited. Oh, my gosh. So it looks like uh, Orcus Nightmare, Nightmare, everything's starting to, get to take a significant hint. Oh, man. Uh, and then we got Gandora X, the Dragon of Demolition. I actually don't know what that card is. Do you guys? Know I don't think we is? have that one in the TCG yet. Mm-hmm. I think it's sort of uh, an extensive um, support to. Uh, I think they introduced Gandora as an archetype. Actually, they did. It yeah. was just like a single Yu Gi Oh monster, right? Is that the one? It. Yeah, it, we'll it show was, it up on screen. Yeah, that's the one. But like, it was actually no. It's from um, Dark Side of Dimensions. It's from the movie. We have it. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm tripping. Then. When this card but, is normal special summon from the hand, you can destroy as many other monsters on the field as possible. And if you do, inflict damage upon equal wow. to the highest original attack on the field among those destroyed monsters. So it seems there's probably... So obviously the OCG list is different. The Forbidden and Limited list is different from ours, right? Yeah. Some cards are definitely going to be there. Some cards are not going to be there. There's probably a reason why, you know, Gandor is banned. You know, there's probably a combo that, you know, exists in the OCG in which, yeah. you know, they could burn for so much damage because that's what I, from reading that and from what you told me, right now with the effect, yeah. looks like that's what it is. Yeah, we'll probably get a preemptive ban on our side too. Yeah. So then have it over here with it. There's like a level leader. I, I doubt it. Yeah, we get level leader banned. They don't got level leader banned, right? No, I think they did. I think because they, they were actually the reason why we got it, though, because they actually had the Link Rebo combo out for a while, and people yeah. started abusing that. You're I think right. that. I think they had it. Yeah. Um, but that's the Forbidden ones. Those are the changes of Forbidden. Um, from Semi-Limited, uh, they got the Dragon Buster, which, I mean, that's a boss monster. What do you expect with that guy? ABC. Uh, Spiral Quick Fix is semi-limited. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I should start with limited. We just did formatted. Huh. Yeah, we're going to limited. Uh, Salomon Great Gazelle Limited. That kind of stinks. 
that hurts the deck a lot. Thunder Dragon Colossus and Thunder Dragonhawk. I think Thunder Dragonhawk probably hurts more than Colossus. I don't think you need to run. How many of those? Lady do you need? Debug is limited. Yeah. It's funny because we were the ones that got hit by that first. Yeah, that is really wow. interesting. Yeah. Um, and then Metaverse. Metaverse. The yeah, so hopefully Mystic Mind's going to take a hit. Uh, which we do see in the semi-limited list, Mystic Mind is down to two now. Oh, man. They should just, like, ban it. Ban Mystic Mind completely? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hate that card. <laughs> yeah, that, that card is not something that the game needs right now. I mean, I'm all for one of, like, letting things exist and, like, there's got to be ways around it. And, like, everyone just needs up Twin Twisters and Cosmic Cyclone. But, like, I've heard nothing but bad things about people in that card. Well, yeah, there's a there's good card design and then there's Mystic Mind. <laughs> so yeah <laughs> all right what else we got we got um necroz cycle so hit necroz um also trishula i'm sorry actually necroz got one from one for two so necroz cycles from one to two all these cards up here were from one to two um trishula dragon the ice barrier is now at two cyberstein's at two cyberstein really yeah so i guess well in here no one's really abusing it okay fair enough yeah um pg hyper librarian is at two uh dinosaur of panker chops is at one from or is that two from being uh, uh yeah it's at three interesting uh dark refer went from three to two dark arm dragon now oh wow dark arm dragon what they got two. Oh my god dad <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so that's a good little semi-limited and then for unlimited we got stratos i mean no one's really even abusing him now yeah um dynamite knight interesting i feel like stratus has expired yeah i think so yeah uh dynamite knight that's still really relevant relevant um totally awesome that's pretty sweet spellbook of knowledge i mean i don't know did we get that one hit i can't remember i don't think we did was it spellbook of towers is the one that's busted the one that has like poorly written knowledge is just the draw one Oh, yeah, no, we have that at three, I believe. Yeah. Knowledge is at three, yeah. Solemn Judgment is now unlimited. That's wow. crazy. Mm-hmm. And then randomly, Ceasefire. Ceasefire. <laughs> like, like we ever needed that. Yeah, I don't know. That's the one that allows you to stall, right? That's all that does, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, these braces are killing me. <laughs> I had to mention that before. I keep moving my lips. But, okay. I mean, overall, it just seems like, you know, we have a pretty interesting future to look forward to in regards to uh, Thunder Dragons. Yeah. It seems like. Definitely. And then um, I, I think if, if the, this this also looked like it kind of leveled out the playing field for a lot of uh, a lot of decks. I think ABCs is now getting a lot more action. Spiral can get a lot more action from this. Like, things I think are going to be a good spot from this. And I'm curious, just excited to see what it does for the TCG as well. Same. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, if you guys want to have a topic on ban lists, I think that might be the end of the podcast. I think, we're yeah. pretty much I think the lesson here to take is I don't think they're ever going to stop censoring our stuff. They're they're going to continue censoring <laughs> yeah. our, our cards, and it's going to suck because there are some cards that are not allowed or they're that are not here. We you know it's OCG exclusive because well I mean okay so I'm bringing this topic up right now because it just reminded me of the Magic Magic Magician Girl. And oh yeah. Not... oh yeah yeah so, this is a good one actually yeah. so yeah so i'll mention that one right before we kind of ended off here um so magic magic magician girl is an exceeds uh rank six uh, monster that's looks really closely a resemblance of the dark magician girl and um it's exclusive the, to the ocg and we don't have it here in the tcg because of the artwork now the only issue with that is like or the only question you guys would probably ask like why don't they just you know censor the artwork um the original artist i think is uh takashi or what sorry what's the creator Yu Gi Oh? uh takashi. i can't remember his name this is bad yeah i this is super bad Mizuki Takashi. there we go Thank Mizuki takahashi. Really i apologize yeah i know his name i, I just thinking. i apologize yeah i was thinking real quick yeah i believe he was the original artist for that card and also for like the, the anniversary cards right sorry came out. kazuki takahashi kazuki yeah. takahashi i apologize twice anyways so going back on topic, uh, so he, I believe he's the, the artist uh, behind the uh, anniversary cards, which those are, cards are, um, and he refused to have his art censored over for here. So he refused to have it. Well, it's not that he refused to have it shipped over here or imported. It's that we won't accept it because it's too revealing. Which we'll show it right here on screen as well. It's it's not that bad, honestly. But it has cleavage, which you know they want to censor. But if they censor it, you know they can't bring it over. That just, makes any sense. It's just kind of unfortunate that yeah. like you know 
we get a lot of like you know these card arts that you know end up getting censored because of the risque nature that it gets when really you know you, you go around nowadays you see like a lot of like you know people like you know say like in middle school wearing risque or shit I yeah mean, it, it's yeah. just kind of messed up we have like this weird double standard where we can't even have this kind of stuff in like you know our our card game not to say that like you know i'm completely complaining about it you know it's not too much of a big deal but like except we don't have magic much well that, that that's more of a issue for you yeah well for anybody who wants to collect the card in english of course or in whatever or language play you want. It, is or it play. Good? it's decent uh if i remember correctly i mean i don't really remember too much because like i didn't bother learning about it anymore if play, i can't yeah. have if i can't yeah. play what's the point of looking at it yeah i mean Get sad honestly i feel like <laughs> the um the localized tcg market needs to recognize their adult demographic when it comes to like i don't know maybe putting out special editions of cards <laughs> you know, especially for those who um you know sort of want to look towards that you know collector value of yeah, like, you know alternate yeah. card art and stuff like that or like if you just have like those very passionate um ocg fans that want tcg art or tcg cards with actual ocg artwork you know yeah well it's, it's crazy to me well two things on that one is like they still have the like collector's rarity over there or whatever yeah. which is crazy cool we don't have that but also like look at dual power like we got dual power which is like these five alternate artworks and then over there they got like the 20th anniversary and that's what those, those were like mm. it's such a cool or 25th anniversary like such a cool much cooler story and like Maybe we'll get that when it's our anniversary, but like I, I doubt it'll be that cool. Like it was, it was a cool item there. You got all the different mats; it's super sweet. Yeah, and I feel like that's always been like you know the format when it came to like you know uh, like a sort of global versus uh, you know Japan or like you know East Asia type you know setup when it comes to like you know trading card games or more particularly card games because a lot of the times. Um, you know, I feel like it has a lot to do with the fact that the OCG is pretty much like the first, you know, playing ground when it comes to like yeah. these things. They're the ones testing these things out, troubleshooting and all that stuff. So I feel like it kind of makes sense that they're getting a lot more of the of like, you know, the exclusive stuff. It's just I feel like, you know, we end up getting shafted at, at the end. Like, you know, yeah. and this has always been a thing when it comes to like, you know, gotcha games or like, you know, any sort of like blind box format uh you know consumer you know product you know it's just it that's always been the case it's just we're never like the the global market is never gonna get it as good as the original market right. from where it came from you know yeah especially when it gets dubbed like sometimes never mind, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> cool yeah all yeah right. but it looks like we have it all covered though yeah. i mean for the most part yeah yeah uh, leave us, let us, if you're watching this on YouTube, let us know down in the comments. Let us know if we left anything out, anything you think is big, and maybe we can do a part two of this always. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening to us, uh, thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I think this is the official Yugi Boom podcast episode two, signing out. Yeah. Oh, and before that, please leave a comment about your favorite uh, band artwork or, you know, a, a artwork that changed that you usually like. For me, it's Mystic Tomato. The artwork is completely different. <laughs> It's some cheese and face for us, and they just get like a pumpkin looking tomato in Japan. That's true. Check out yeah. the check out the Mystic Tomato artwork yeah. if you have it. Check, check it out. And again, tell us your favorite changes in the OCG versus TCG artwork and what you guys is, what, what, I guess, least favorite too. Yeah. Also, don't forget to ring the bell, get notified for when we upload any future Yu Gi Boom content. Like, subscribe.